Healing yourself is the first and foremost important thing after divorce. Because how are you going to date and bring someone into your life if you haven't even healed yourself first? So make sure you heal yourself first. everybody it's your girl mama mayhem and for today's video I'm gonna be talking to you guys about the big D no not that big D I'm talking about dating after divorce but before we begin as always if you're new to my channel please subscribe and hit that notification button so you can be notified when my next video comes out also, please like, share, and if you're going through dating after divorce, comment below, let me know, like, and share. All right, you guys, you ready to begin? I kind of am. Let's go. All right, you guys, I know divorce is so painful. The process is a headache. It's heartbreaking. It's basically a moment of you having to mourn your past marriage. So the first thing you have to do any time that you're going through divorce or trying to date after divorce, you have to, have to heal. Heal yourself. If that means crying. <laughs> exercising like crazy. Keeping yourself busy. Or even talking to others or talking to a therapist. I just don't know how to feel anymore. I don't know what to do. Am I crazy? Was he crazy? I don't know. You have to heal. Healing yourself is the first and foremost important thing after divorce. Because how are you going to date and bring someone into your life if you haven't even healed yourself first. So make sure you heal yourself first. Okay, so during that time of you healing, it may take months, it may take years, it may take multiple years, it's okay. Heal yourself, get to know yourself, put yourself first during those healing moments because you don't want to obsess about, okay, I'm divorced, I need to find a man, I need to find a woman, I need to go and do this, my clock is ticking, my biological clock is ticking, I need to do this now. No, you don't. Calm down, sis. Calm down, bro. You are okay. You don't need to jump into another relationship. Heal, take some time, put yourself first. Maybe go on a first date with yourself. Date yourself. Date yourself is very important because you want to learn to be alone, learn to love to be alone before you can bring other people back into your life and start another relationship. I personally, after dating through divorce, I've taken myself on dinner dates, movie dates. I've even traveled by myself. I love being by myself because I've learned to be by myself. It's okay. I mean, also maybe because I am an only child, it's a little easier, I don't know, but I have learned and I know how to be by myself and it's okay to be by yourself. It's okay to be single. You do not have to be stressed out about being single. You really don't. It's so much fun if you really think about it because you have time to do anything that you want to do, focusing on your career, focusing on your family, focusing on your school. Maybe go back to school, take up a cooking class. Do whatever you want to do because during this time, it's all about you right now. Being single, it's okay to be about you right now because you went through such an emotional trauma like a divorce. Heal and go through being alone and being by yourself. It's okay. While you're dating after divorce, also learn to be productive because when you're dating someone, you do not want to come off as clingy and very needy and texting that person constantly nonstop. You have to learn to be productive so you're not constantly looking at your phone. Oh my God, has he texted? Oh my God, has he texted? Oh my God, has he texted? Oh my God, he's finally texted me. He texted me. Oh my God, I have to text him right now. Oh my God, he hasn't texted me back. What the heck? He hasn't texted me back. What am I gonna do? He hasn't texted me back. Please don't be like that person. That's psycho behavior. 
That's crazy, okay? We're trying to eliminate all crazy in your life, sis. We're trying to eliminate that crazy in your life, bro. Please don't come off as crazy, needy, emotionally needy, needy, supportive. You, like, do not come off too much. Just, just chill, just chill, be productive. Focus on your hobbies, focus on your career, focus on your kids, or focus on your family. Do whatever you gotta do to be productive. Also, while you're dating through divorce, you wanna write your pros and cons of yourself. What you like about yourself, what you dislike about yourself. Also, what you liked about yourself in your past marriage, what you disliked about yourself in your past marriage. Because in that process, you're making sure that you're trying to improve yourself. You don't want to go into another relationship with the same old you. You want to show some growth within yourself. You want to say, okay, this is what I did wrong. This is what I can do better. This is what I did great. This is what I can even keep with my next relationship. You want to make sure you're focusing on healing and growth within yourself. That is great to do before you go on your first date. All right, so now that you've healed yourself, you're ready to start dating. But now that you're ready to date, don't obsess over it. Don't talk about it. Don't make it your num number one priority to find a man, find a girlfriend, whatever the case may be. Just keep it cool, keep it calm. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is go to social media like Instagram or Facebook and slide into some DMs. Talk to people first in a very, you know, easy going way. Don't be like, what do you want? Do you want kids? Do you want marriage? Do you want, no, 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 no. Do not do that, okay? Also, maybe ask some of your friends to see if they have so many single friends that they can set you up with. I mean, that's another way to go. Who else knows you better than you, than your family and your friends? So ask your friends, see if they have anybody for you. So if your friends have some friends or your family members have some single friends for you, the first thing you wanna do is do a pre-date trial. That means FaceTiming the person, talking over the phone, getting to know each other a little bit before you go on that first date. Because you don't wanna go on a date with a psycho. That also could mean you, you know, checking up on that person, going through their Facebook a little bit, see what they're about, don't stalk them. Do not stalk the person you're going on a first date with. Just see what they're about on a very easy level. Because number one, you don't wanna go out with a psycho, and number two, you don't wanna seem like a psycho by stalking them. So find that middle ground, that middle ground where you're not gonna be crazy or they're not crazy, okay? Okay, so now you're ready for your first date. You wanna find a great outfit, something that is gonna be appropriate for the date. While you were going through that pre-date trial, you guys are also communicating on what kind of date you're gonna go through, right? I hope so, you better do, because based off of that conversation, you're gonna pick the perfect first date outfit. That could be something casual like a jean jacket with a jumpsuit, or a dress, a nice summer dress, or a nice spring dress, or if you're a man, something casual like a blazer and a shirt and some jeans, casual. Also, it depends on what you guys are doing for the first date. All right, so first date ideas. What you wanna do is go on a first date, but do not make it overly expensive. You can go to the park. You can have a picnic in the park. You can go miniature golfing or go-kart riding. Or if you want to, something even more casual, walk around a pier, like Santa Monica Pier if you're living in LA. Walk around a pier and just, you know, get to know each other. Afterwards, see a movie. Do not see a movie the first thing you do on your first date because you want to actually talk to the person, get to know them face to face. You can't do that through a movie. So if you don't want to go through an expensive dinner, these are some great first date ideas. All right, so let's talk about dating apps. If you already slid into some DMs yet and social media isn't working, it's okay. If you haven't have any luck with some of your friends setting you up with their single friends, it's okay because we got dating apps. You have Tinder, you have OkCupid, you have Bumble, you have Coffee Before Bagel International Dating. You have so many options like this phone, 
you can explore the world of men and women all over through this phone. Like dating apps is the way to go. It is 2021, girl. You're good. Like download some of those apps, talk to some people, come up with great questions, great casual questions. Do not ask them about how many kids they have, how many kids they want, do they want to get married, do they want to get married in a year, what kind of ring do they want, what kind of shoes do they like, what do they want, blah, 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 blah. Like, chill, chill, calm down. Ask casual questions like, name some things off of your bucket list, or, do you like bagels or croissants? I don't know. Ask casual conversation. Also, don't be boring. Don't be bland. Don't be like, what's up? How are you doing? Don't be bland. Don't be boring. Be a conversationalist. Ask interesting, engaging questions. Be intriguing. Be interesting. But don't come off as crazy. Just be cool. If you want, you can even Google what are some great first date questions or what are some great questions while you're dating casually. Just do your research. If you don't know how to come up with those type of questions, do your own research, but be calm, cool, and collected. Okay, so dating apps can be dangerous. So be careful and do your proper research on that person before you go on a date with them. Because you don't wanna go on a date with someone that's crazy or that was a suicidal maniac. Like, do your own research, be smart, text somebody your location, where you're gonna be, Text them after the date is done and making sure that you look across, you know, your shoulders, that no one's stalking you, no one's following you. Just be sensible, make sure you're going out sensible people and just be smart. Don't go to someone's house that you barely know. Be safe, be smart and be safe. All right, so now that you're feeling that person, maybe you've gone on through two, three, four dates with that person, do not, I repeat, do not. Be exclusive right away with that person. Date multiple people. It's okay. You're single-ish. You're dating, but you're single still. Date multiple people. Get to know multiple people because you don't know if that one person that you went on a first date with or three dates with is the one. You don't know them. You really don't know them. Date multiple people until about maybe three, six months and then find someone you want to be exclusive with. Hone in on the person that you want to be exclusive with. Don't rush into a relationship right after you got a divorce. Just date multiple people, get to know multiple people, be okay with dating multiple people. It's okay, you're not gonna be judged, no one's gonna judge you. Date and talk on a casual level with multiple people until you're ready to be exclusive again. And that may take time, and it's okay if it takes time, just make sure that you're doing it at your own pace. So now that you're dating, you might feel that pressure with trying to be exclusive with that person through family or friends. Friends are asking, oh, have you found anyone yet or your family and like oh when are you gonna get married again please ignore the outside world and their crazy opinions do everything at your own pace if that means that you want to talk to that person for multiple times you may not even want to actually you know what you may not even want to get married again maybe you just want to like date and just be in a relationship with someone and that's it no more marriage no more doing anything and that's okay because you know what divorce after dating is hard. You may not want to go through that process of getting married again and divorce. It's okay. Don't do it. You can be in a relationship forever. Goldie Hawn and Russell has done it for multiple years. You don't have to get married to feel fulfilled. You can stay unmarried. It's okay. Just be with the person that you love and stick with it. Make sure you're in a healthy, happy relationship. That's most important than trying to be married again and getting that ring on your finger again. It's cool. Also, while you're dating multiple people or you're even exclusively dating, don't talk about your ex. Don't obsess over your past marriage. Like, it's okay to say I was married before, you know, it didn't work out, and now I'm ready to date again. You can talk about that, but do not be like, oh, my ex used to do that. Oh, you're kind of like my ex. You remind me of him or you remind me of her. Oh my God, like you're a Taurus? Like my ex was a Taurus. I don't know. Don't do that. Like that, why? That's not productive. That's not, 
That's not healing yourself and moving on. You have to move on. Stop talking and obsessing about what your ex did, what your past relationship did to you, what your past marriage, how it hurt you. Just, you have to go through that with your friends and family privately through the healing process. But now that you're dating someone new, you're dating multiple people that are new, don't bring the old into the new and making it into one dumpster fire. Please don't. Clean it up. Be happy, sis. Move on, bro. Be cool and don't talk and obsess over your ex. Leave that person alone. They're in your past for a reason. Do not bring them into your new relationship. So dating after divorce with kids. If you have kids, it's okay, you can still date. Make arrangement with that other parent and making sure that they're aware like, hey, I'm dating again and I would like for us to co-parent together in a very healthy way. I need Saturday off, can you watch so-and-so and see if they're cool with that. If they're not cool with that, it's okay, but you still have to find time for yourself to making sure that you are able to date and making sure that you're able to date and finding time and prioritizing your family, your kids with the other person that you're dating. Prioritize, compromise, and be a healthy person and making sure your time is spread out equally. Of course your kids come first, but also making sure that you also making that partner that you're dating right now don't feel like they are in the back burner. You gotta also try to find a way to time manage yourself. Having time for this, having time for that, having time for that. If that means you writing up a schedule, you gotta write up a schedule. Some people are visual learners, so it's okay if you have to learn how to write things down, saying Mondays are this, Tuesdays are this, Fridays I, is for myself, Saturday is for me, whatever. Manage your time, manage your partner that you're dating right now, prioritize what you need to prioritize and get things done. You can balance it, you can juggle it equally. It's good. All right, you guys, there you have it, dating after divorce. Whew. To recap, you want to make sure you heal yourself. Put yourself first, date yourself, heal yourself, get to know yourself, weigh the pros and cons of yourself and how you did in your previous relationship and your future relationships. Then when you're ready to date, you want to make sure that you can, you know, slide into some DMs casually, maybe ask some friends and family if they have single friends. And then afterwards, maybe look into some dating apps. Then you want to look into what you want to do on that first date, what you're going to wear, where you want to go, making sure that you are happy, healthy, and wise within that first date. Then you want to date, go, then you want to go into looking into dating multiple people before you become exclusive. <sighs> And then maybe you may not want to enter another relationship or enter another marriage. That's all on you. But making sure that you write those things down and go through the process of dating after divorce. All right, you guys, so there you have it. Wonderful and healthy tips on dating after divorce. Hopefully it's been helpful for you. If it has, please comment below and let me know what you guys think. Like and share this video. And as always, please subscribe and hit that notification button so you can be notified when my next video comes out because they're coming out. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Love you always. Bye.